Today's video is sponsored by the team over at CoastalCryptoMining.com. Coastal Crypto Mining is unlike any other crypto hardware vendor in the industry. Why you may ask? Well, their team doesn't just view you as a customer, but as a fellow passionate enthusiast. Coastal Crypto Mining's experience starts with helping you with your initial research and questions, then on to the purchase and shipping stage. Once delivered, help with your setup and configuration, and finally, any after-sales support you may need. Their team of experts strives to make your experience one of a kind, where customer service is a priority. Head on over to CoastalCryptoMining.com and tell them the hobbyist miner sent you. Hey guys, what's going on? John Maz here. I'm back at the Coastal Crypto Castle. I do apologize for the shaky camera and the weird angles and my kids screaming in the background. Um, my wife usually helps me film some of these here at the castle, but she's working today. But I really wanted to get this video out to you guys uh, because sitting behind me, already in pieces, is the Maltmiter M2. Now, this one actually came to us with a missing heatsink. Not so much missing, sorry. It had fallen off in transit. So whether these things come in on the plane or come in by boat across the road, they get jumbled around a little bit, no matter how well they're packaged. So let's take a look at what we got. Um, let's take a closer look at this hash board and the control board, and uh, I'll show you guys what I had to do to get this heat sink back applied to the hash board. All right, let me turn the camera around and we'll get going. All right guys, so here it is. This is the Malt Miner M2. You've already seen, I can, uh, I've already disassembled some of the ribbon cables. Um, and I've pulled the back casing off the, off the machine. It's only got two fans on it. We got two smaller or lower, lower profile 120 millimeter fans on the front. And there is the hash board. It looks like we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, ten total uh, chips or uh, FPGA chips and a ton of resistors and capacitors along the side. This one here, this heat sink is actually one that fell off. But let's flip it over and see what the back looks like here. They're pretty simplistic boards. There's not a whole lot to them. Again, we're only running FPGAs. We're not running ASICs. Um, they're really clean, well put together in my opinion. From what I could tell, the thermal paste that they had used is so-so. Is uh, they could have used better stuff. What we're using here, what I used to reattach it, don't lose my mess of stuff on the bottom. Um, this is the thermal paste that I had used. It's a two pound compound to reattach the current heat sink that had fallen off. Um, again, it's, you know, let it cure for 12, 18 hours, 24 if you want, and it's on there pretty tightly. I will post pictures on Discord. Uh, if you guys want to go take a look at what that chip actually looks like underneath that ASIC or underneath that heat sink, sorry, it's not an ASIC, uh, FPGA. Um, let's go ahead and pop out this control board and take a look at that and see what that looks like. All right, here you go. Here's the control board for the Multiminer M2. It looks like there's already an SD card already inserted in it. Um, that's not something that I put in. It looks like it came with that SD card. I'm assuming that is what contains the bitstream for this FPGA to function properly. Uh, we have yet to plug this thing in. Uh, make sure you guys tune in to the live stream on Wednesday. We're going to be going through the GUI and a lot of the other components with this M2. Uh, we'll figure out what that little SD card is actually for. Um, these things are actually pretty snugly put together. Not a whole lot of room inside these machines. Sorry about the camera angle again. For me to pull out that control board, I actually had to remove both of these hash boards. Um, they're, they're in there pretty tightly. I had to actually pry up on these two fins here to remove the hash boards. They're, again, these are tightly compacted into this machine. It is a lower profile machine. Uh, it should fit nicely on one of our racks with you know very minimal space or real estate taken up. But uh, I'm gonna get this thing put back together. I'm gonna get it put back on the shelf. And uh, we'll see what kind of hash rates we can get. Again, let's figure out what that SD card does. We'll figure out uh, what more or less the GUI 
functions as. And uh, make sure you guys, again, turn into that live stream. Uh, we're going to be going over the GUI. We're going to be going over the Malt Miner uh, M2 a little bit more in depth. Um, taking a look at the bit streams and uh, seeing what kind of results we can get with it within Caspa, Digibit, Radiant maybe. Uh, I know that's been a big topic for uh, Team Red Miner. But make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and tune in for the live stream on Wednesday. Take it easy, guys.